<laughs> so as you guys know, uh, OpenStock recently became Apache Metron. Um, and we are currently planning our first release at the, at the end of the month. Um, so let me go through the uh, through the journey uh, to get to Metron. So set a little bit of a stage so we can see how we got here. Uh, so um, as I mentioned, Metron was originally called OpenSock, and it was uh, first released by Cisco in 2014. Uh, so we had this concept of a big data security analytics framework, and back then, uh, Hadoop uh, was really immature, and we had to compile a lot, a lot of things from scratch and, and glue a lot of pieces together. Uh, it took us about a year to get there, uh, and uh, we worked on portions of it with Hortonworks at the time. And by September of 2014, we had a uh, sort of a beta version that we uh, published on GitHub, uh, which received a pretty good um, traction in the community. So after that, we, re uh, we released in uh, around April time frame of 2014, uh, a, what we call a community edition of OpenSoft, uh, where people can download our framework, play with it, extend it. Um, and we received a couple of fairly cool contributions from the community at that time, but around July of, of 2015, uh, Cisco was sort of changing his strategy and going into a different direction, so uh, it stopped supporting OpenSock, and then um, I joined Hortonworks in, in October of 2014. Um, and uh, what I found out is that there's actually quite a bit of interest about OpenSock in the community. And specifically, Mantec and, and V23 were uh, very interested in, in continuing on with OpenSock have had in fact forked and had their own versions of it and they were uh, continuing to build up you know, additional features on top of the platform. Um, uh, so what we did instead was uh, we decided to combine efforts uh, and uh, merge the, the Mantec, the V23, the Hortonworks and the open source uh, Cisco version together um, and uh, get it into Apache so we can all work on it together. So, uh, in December of 2016, we uh, submitted a proposal to the Apache Foundation and were accepted into incubation. Uh, and as I mentioned, our first release is going to be uh, in January of this year. And um, a little bit later in this presentation, I'll tell you what we're planning on releasing for our first uh, Metron release. Um, so for those of you that uh, haven't heard of OpenSock or Metron, the, this diagram basically represents what it is that, that we have. Um, and so our vision for Metron is for it to be an extensible platform. So we, we want to get away from having point tools. We want to migrate to common platforms. Um, we want to uh, create a sort of a, a common way of ingesting data and storing data inside of a, a data vault. So doing it in a, in a secure uh, and scalable way. Um, we want to be able to act on as much data as we can via stream processing. So uh, there are batch components to our framework as well as streaming components to our framework, but we always optimize and we always bias towards the, the streaming pieces. Um, and so, for example, for the security data lake, uh, we provide an enriched 360 degree view of a message. Um, as the message is captured of the sensor and is ingested through a framework, we have mechanisms to uh, enrich that message with as much data as you know about it uh, to create a streaming 360 degree view of everything you know. So for example, if you're ingesting NetFlow, you know which user it belongs to, which type of asset is going to, uh, what, did, what is the geolocation that uh, communication came from, um, all kinds of identity data associated with that flow. Basically, everything that you know about that, every piece of data within that message, you should be able to enrich. Um, after that, uh, we're, we're providing uh, provide correlation and search capabilities once the data lands uh, in the data lake uh, to uh, turn uh, OpenSock more into like an investigation and a threat hunting platform. Uh, so if you're if you're interested on in looking for specific features of data, you can correlate uh, parts of messages with other parts of messages. Uh, you can. Uh, submit wild search queries, you can discover various aspects of your data. Uh, so you're able to massively iterate against the data that you've stored inside of your uh, data vault uh, to discover new insights about your data. Um, so what we, we also want to have is a pluggable framework. So as I mentioned, we don't want to restrict it to just a point tool. 
Uh, we want people to be able to adapt it to, to their specific use cases. Uh, so we provide an extensible framework for parsers and richers uh, hooking up to thread intelligence feeds and then writing your own UI widgets. Um, so what you're able to do uh, is easily add additional sources and our hope is that uh, the open source community, um, we're, we're trying to provide the more common parsers and richers uh, integration with thread intel and UI widgets just, just to get us started. But the hope is that the community will provide um, the rest of them, obviously, we can account for every single device and every single type of enrichment that people would want to do. Um, and, and so the hope is that eventually the community will build this up over time to make this a de facto standard for, for ingesting data. And, and what we mean by a pluggable framework for ingesting data is we don't just mean you know consuming things from a syslog, uh, tagging a couple of fields, and then ingesting that you know for indexing or into HDFS. We mean um, tokenizing and standardizing the way you ingest the data, um, turning into a, a sort of a standard format for ingestion, um, and then um, being able to search not just on a, on a blob of a message as a whole, but uh, tagging each individual part of the message so, you, so you're able to correlate it with, with more things uh, that, that, you're, that you're ingesting. Uh, and then being able to visualize that in innovative ways with uh, different types of widgets. Um, so we, we also, the, the primary application of Metron is obviously around security analytics. Uh, and there's a, a couple of point tools and the functionality of point tools that we'd like to either augment or replace with Metron. So the, the primary capability is a, is a SIM. Uh, but the, the real sort of advantage of uh, Metron is that it, it's not just a SIM, but it's a, it's a combination of things that run on the same platform. So you benefit from um, having like a SIM-like capability, but also like a, a network capture and replay capability, um, and also like an evidentiary store and a, and a hunting platform capability together. So you can go between the two fairly easily. So if you have a piece of metadata you're interested in, you can immediately jump into a PCAP for that metadata and be able to replay the traffic again. Um, if you all of a sudden receive new thread signatures, you can replay your traffic. Um, uh, through the uh, through your security appliances uh, to see if uh, your old traffic can now um, uh, if the neutral if the new rules can now be triggered against your old traffic um, you can uh, secure your data you can just use Metron just for storing PCAP um, if, if that's what you wanted to do uh, so the framework is extensible you can use it for any part of this or you can use the, the framework as a whole uh, to try to um, account for some of the capability of these um, capabilities of these point tools, uh, and then finally, the, the extensible threat intelligence framework uh, allows you to hook, to hook into third-party feeds um, and then create static rules, um, model uh, data streaming through your stream processor, uh, and share. Or that's one of the capabilities we're currently working on is be able to share indicators of compromise among uh, various installed instances of, of Metron. Um, and so what we're trying to do with this piece is be able to pull in threat intelligence feeds from a variety of sources on the internet, uh, some that are free, some of them that you have to pay for, uh, be able to normalize them, dedupe them, uh, age them out of your system, uh, and allow you to basically cross-reference every piece of data that's coming through your uh, stream, in stream ingestion pipeline against these threat intelligence feeds. Uh, and so what we give you the, the we give you the capability to basically look at everything that's coming through your system um, uh, and, and then reference that against the threat intelligence feeds, uh, also against uh, static rules uh, that uh, um, that you can write and also be able to expose the data to machine learning models. So um, in, in our vision, um, what we have uh, is a concept called the model as a service, uh, which is a series of models that run against your data into the data lake or in the data lake or in the data vault uh, and continuously uh, learn from the data, learn new intelligence. And whenever they, they, they learn some, some intelligence that they can act on, uh, they can expose that through a RESTful API. So as the data is streaming through your system, you can then uh, route the data into the model and ask the model, do you think this is malicious? Do you think uh, this is benign? What do you think this behavior is? And the models can tell you if something is anomalous, they can tell you if something is good or bad, you can have classifiers. 
Um, you can have just anomaly detectors, you can cluster different things together. So, so our vision is to, um, is an easy integration with that capability uh, to aid uh, the, the sort of deterministic rules-based capability uh, as well as uh, threat intel um, integration. Do you guys have any questions so far? Nope. Cool. So, back when I uh, presented OpenSOC, this is the slide that uh, we're, we're commonly would lead in with, uh, which uh, describes a top level uh, concept of the framework. Um, and uh, so, the idea here is that you take a variety of, of feeds, um, as many feeds as you can, and you make it easy to ingest them. Uh, and the first thing you do is you have a three-stage pipeline. So the first thing you need to do is you need to parse and normalize the feeds, so turn them into um, a, a normalized format that you can um, either key your models against or uh, key your thread intel feeds against or um, write rules against. Um, after that, what you do is you enrich the data. So that's the 360-degree view that I talked about. So uh, you enrich it with, with as many feeds as you can. So an example would be if you're getting a message uh, and you can attach a geolocation to that message. If that message has a domain as a part of that message, you can attach um, who is information. Um, if you can figure out who the user is, you can attach identity information. If you can figure out what the asset is that the message is going to, you can attach asset information. And so the, um, the, sort of the, the net output of that step um, is a a standardized message um, that is parsed um, and formatted in a specific sort of open sock way. Um, and then in addition to the message, you also have the enriched parts of the message. And then you, you can take the message and then the enriched part of the message and you can bounce it against threat intelligence feeds to, to see if you know anything about any of the fields that are in the message as well as any of the fields that are in the, in the enriched parts of the message. Um, and once you do that, you can then land the data in one of the three buckets. So if you want the data exposed for sort of real-time iterative um, hunting type capability or searching or um, visualization, you would land the data in solar. Uh, so you would index the data um, and you would expose it through, right now, uh, through a framework called Banana. Uh, but eventually we're uh, planning to release a custom UI uh, to be able to visualize this. Um, for raw packets, you would store them in HBase. Uh, and what we do is we have a service that uh, wraps HBase that basically turns it into a network store and replay type tool. Uh, and so uh, we, we have a, a series of services that tie the two together. So you can go from your uh, solar um, like interactive um, capability uh, when you find something you're interested in and you want to see what the network, network traffic for that uh, specific metadata uh, look like, you can go back into HBase and recover the PCAP and be able to replay that PCAP for, for that metadata. Um, and then if you wanted to store the data for long term or provide some kind of a access control capability where you can see parts of the data but not other parts of the data um, and, and have different user roles accessing your data, uh, you would land it in, into high for long term storage. Uh, and through the ODBC, JDBC connectivity of Hive, you can expose that to uh, external tools. Uh, and you can also use that interface to uh, do your predictive modeling on. Um, and on top of that, uh, we provide a series of UIs um, that can drive these uh, backends. So we provide, as I mentioned, Banana. We provide uh, Jupyter to be able to, to do a lot of your modeling. And um, right now we're, um, on track to provide a tool called Zeppelin, which is a sort of a next-gen uh, REPL um, that you can use to interrogate data um, that uh, you, you've stored in uh, either in, in raw HDFS, in Hive, or in HBase. And the Banana framework is extensible, so you can write additional widgets. Uh, it's almost like writing uh, straight up HTML and then just uh, embedding it into, into a widget framework. Um, and uh, the, the common misconception is that the widgets can only hit against solar. Uh, there are ways of, of having widgets hit, hit against HBase and Hive as well, so you can really provide that sort of a single pane of glass uh, for your uh, users by customizing 
uh, whatever the, the view of the data that they want to have, uh, you can really define uh, with this framework. <coughs> Um, so, so this is a more detailed view of uh, what I just talked about, and, and this is actually how OpenSock was implemented at Cisco. So at Cisco we use OpenSock as a part of a managed service called Managed Threat Defense, and this was a, a typical deployment of this service. Uh, and so, so this, this is how, how it looked like for us. Um, and so the, one of our, or I guess our higher volume topologies uh, were acquired by uh, a network tap. So we acquired uh, PCAP data and our D-packet inspection data uh, directly from uh, accelerated uh, network card, like network uh, tap devices. Um, and uh, we had custom probes um, and custom Kafka uh, producers to pipe that data uh, into a Kafka topic where um, once the data lands in the Kafka topic, so for the PCAP topic, we would land each packet into the topic, one packet at a time. And uh, for DPI, we, we would um, land the metadata uh, associated with uh, sessions or conversations, also one message at a time. Then what we would do is we would pick it up with uh, storm topologies, uh, in the case of PCAP, we would parse out the header metadata from packets and turn it into HBase key, uh, and store the packet data into HBase to allow us to throw a service on top of that to be able to reconstruct network captures into PCAP. And the DPI topology would then be indexed uh, into Solar, and also um, the, the standard messaging format within OpenSock or Metron is a, is a JSON. So you can go through a standard set of JSON surveys and turn your JSON data uh, into Hive data, bulk load Hive tables. Um, so you have a SQL searchable capability, SQL search capability for your data, and your external tools can also access the data, uh, and you can enforce uh, access policies on top of that. Um, so the, the rest of our topologies were lower volume topologies, and um, at the time we used Flume, uh, to capture them, and, and right now the Metron project is switching towards uh, using NiPy uh, for making that acquisition. There, there are several key advantages to NiPy that, that Flume uh, does not provide, uh, so we feel it's, it's better to switch to NiPy for, for that capability. Um, and so once we acquire that data, uh, we also land it into Kafka Topics, where you get uh, one topic for each uh, sensor type. Uh, which then also is acquired by storm topology, and it goes through the three-stage pipeline that I talked to you guys about, so it normalizes the data, enriches the data, cross-references it against thread intel feeds and, and rules, and then applies uh, machine learning logic to see if it needs to generate alerts or not. Um, and then once it does that, uh, the data again lands uh, either into solar um, or uh, in HBase, depending on your access patterns. Uh, and uh, if there are alerts generated from your data, the alerts data uh, lands itself in, uh, in solar. Uh, so that's the, the ingest pattern for um, a common Metron deployment. So, so this is the recommended um, hardware deployment for, for Metron. Um, and so um, at Cisco, like a typical deployment, uh, was around uh, uh, 15 nodes. Our uh, recommended deployment right now is to try it out on uh, six servers, uh, fairly garden variety uh, type servers. Um, um, and so, yeah, so, so the, the type of components that you need to be able to facilitate uh, a Metron deployment um, is you need, you basically, your standard Hadoop cluster. Um, and you need a couple of uh, scripts that we provide to be able to spin up uh, Metron on top of your cluster. So the, the existing uh, version of Metron uh, assumes it's, it's the only app running on the cluster, uh, but uh, within the next few releases, uh, we'll, we're trying to make it uh, so that it can run with other services uh, and be able to provision its own resources as well. So, um, so that's currently in the works. Um, so you, you'll get to see um, a demo of Metron a little bit later on uh, from the Cap1 guys, but this is what the old 
uh, OpenSock UI used to look like. So it's your basic uh, Kibana interface, sort of customized for the security analytics use case. Um, and the sort of the, the purpose of this, of this UI is to provide you with um, what I would describe a single pane of glass of where you're interested in a specific alert or a specific uh, point in time that you want to look at. Um, you can click on various parts of this UI uh, and then the, the other panels will filter out uh, to display just the data relevant to what it is that you're looking for. So if you only want to see um, source fire alerts you know, within a certain time range, you can specify that and then UI will filter out to just provide that information. If you only want to um, look for data 